Hello, welcome back. It's M0YKS. Today I've got the Retivis RT3S out and I've also treated myself to a second Arrow Mark II antenna. Let's see how I get on. So yeah, we've got a bit of activity. Here, uh, signal's coming in from both radios. So right now I've got my arrow antenna back out here as usual. Just modified the radios. But yeah, we're getting a pretty good reception on this little rubber duck. Um, just going to point that in the right direction. Check the elevation. So, a little bit more. There we go. So GB3RS coming in. Coming on on this one as well. Not too bad. So what I like about this radio is it's got the auto frequency correction. So yeah, we can track the frequency automatically. Don't have to change anything on the radio. And this one, we've got to wind it down a little bit to the next uh, portion of the band. Move the antenna slightly. So yeah, we're just out of about 892 on the frequency. So as you can see, this is counting down nicely. Oh, bang on frequency, so no uh, correction required there. I've had to actually uh, update the Keplers on this using the OpenGD77 software. So I just plug the radio into the PC, update the latest Keps, and I've added a couple of other birds to it as well. I'll do another video showing you how to do that later. So I'm going to use this with its own uh, dedicated arrow antenna. Uh, M0 YKS stroke sat <laughs> yeah I'm just outside I'm playing around with this Retivis today so I've had this one for about 12 months uh, you know I've got the other two I've uh, modified the cradle and uh, everything's good on that particular one so yeah I've got this one because I want to um, I basically want to use it so I've updated the satellite list we've got SO124 SO50 ISS uh, let's see what else we've got of interest I saw in last night, easy enough to do using the software. So I've got AO123 in there as well. So a couple of FM birds, and hopefully we'll get a few new ones. We've also got the DMR coming in. So that's working off the hotspot, but right now I'm on the satellite stuff. So I've got a pass coming up from SO50. So before that happens, which is going to be happening, let's have a look, in around about. Well, we're on about now actually. So I'll put that on the frequency and leave that on, see if we can hear anything. Whilst I'm doing that, I've got this. So yeah, this is the uh, new little thing I've purchased. It's another arrow, of course. Of course, he says. So yeah, this is gonna be uh, used just without the tripod and one radio, that's the idea. I'm gonna use this. So we've got that software, we can track it. We don't have to worry about the phone or the tablet. And then to do that, I'm going to use this. So this is a little mini duplexer already made up. Uh, it actually came with that 20 years ago. Took it out of the base and I've had it in a drawer sitting collecting dust. And I've often wondered if I'm going to ever use it. So now's the time. So rather than spending extra cash on this, I've got a cheaper version. I've just got the um, arrow without the duplexer, obviously. So let's get the stuff out of here. It's going to go in the handle, hopefully. I'm going to do that first. So I'm just going to pop this plug out, blanking plug, little black blanking plug. And I'm going to get this, oops, oh dear, put that there. I'm going to get this duplexer and feed it in carefully. That's going to drop in. <laughs> I've done that again. That's going to drop into there like that. And then that's just going to feed down once that's in. Twist that and lock that and push that up. Pretty neat. 
so that's fully fitted in the handle perfect so next stage of the game get the second part of the boom drop that into there I like how they've got the copper connecting pieces for this block section nice snug fit made out of aluminium as this block section so that's the uh, the size of the boom still fairly weighty <clears throat> So let's get the rest of the sections out. So they're coming two bags. Bag there. The screwdriver. Stand the radio up. I'm expecting this pass to come in. I'm just going to move this antenna. See whether we can pick anything up on this. Whilst we're listening to uh, 436. Eight zero five. So we'll leave that on there. See whether we get a signal. And we'll put this one, let's have a quick look. Um, that's all 50 actually. Nice, nicely constructed. Like I say, I've had one for a long time, so money well spent. I've had that one for 20 years. I'll just working it out. It's roughly worked out at about eight pounds a year, if that. So not really complaining him sections out first easy enough to build I don't really need the instruction manual I'll let you have a quick look at the instruction manual so it comes with the instructions shows the assembly how it all works detailed but I've obviously already got one so I should be able to assemble it without looking at the instructions. Um, so, start with the biggest element, obviously. I do say they can assemble these antennas in two minutes. We'll see. I'm not going to rush. I'm on holiday so yeah if you're thinking about buying a satellite antenna of your own I can highly recommend these question is, will we get it built up in time for a quick play on SR50? We'll see. So that's the 70 cm side taken care of. Easy enough. Let's do the 2 meter side. So same plan. Get all the uh, lengths out. Organised. So we know that the resonant length. Reflector. So I'll start off at this end. In reverse. I'm going to avoid connecting with my other antenna. Okay, where's the, the rod? There it is. Handle these carefully, these gamma matches, they are quite, well, not fragile, but you've got to be careful. So, we built up, I don't think it was quite two minutes, I think it maybe have been a bit longer. But, okay for my first go with this particular antenna. So, I've just got to find the connectors now. So, luckily the longer one goes to the 145, because it's a copper or duplexer. So it's all pre-made, I may have to just slacken that off, turn that a little bit, move that up first, and then nip that down. That's on. And then this next connector, BNC type connector, is going to drop on to the 70 cents, we'll do the same procedure, slacken it off. Let's 
spin it around to connect. But maybe I just got it carried away in the boom. Either way. Feed that on, line that up. Give that a good nick up. Make sure you do the same with that. Once you're happy with it. Okay, so that's the uh, the build. Possibly cable tie them out of the way, but we've got those anyway, so that's the, the build looking good so far. But all I've got to do now is connect my the key bit, which on this one I'm quite fortunate because I've changed it and I've got the BNT quick release antenna. Incidentally, this is a good antenna, this little uh, portable antenna which I picked up the Nagoya and it Nagoya uh, from. AliExpress NA70 or 701 UHF VHF nice little piece of kit cheap works well so we've got the quick connectors and I can just pop that on and I'm in business so we've now got the sat band up and running and the bird is in range so I'm just going to turn the squelch down Mike Zero, Yankee Kilo Sierra portable. Romeo Sierra, Golf Bravo 3, Romeo Sierra. Hello, testing 1, 2, 3. Mike Zero, Yankee Kilo Sierra portable. Hello, testing 1, 2, 3. Mike, Mike, so that I'm going to hide. Mike Zero, Yankee Kilo Sierra portable. Yeah, I think you're in there, M1 Triple D. Uh, thanks for coming back. 5x9 Italy Oscar 93 Charlie United, Mike Zero, Yankee Kilo Sierra. Okay, uh, okay, Simon, got your 73 uh, Oscar 5, Mike Sugar Tango Airtoad. So, yeah, we're working. That's uh, M1 Triple D. Uh, Delta Oscar 5 Mike Sugar Tango handheld. This is Mike Zero Yankee Kilo Sierra, also operating handheld. Italy Oscar 93 Charlie United. So I think that's pretty safe to say. It's a winner. G6YTZM0 YKS handheld. Uh, G6YTZ Mike 0 Yankee Kilo Sierra portable. So yeah, that's a pretty big success. So what I'm liking about it is obviously easy, the ease of operation. We've got the bird auto being tracked. This is a bit like a bit of the camera. We've got the bird, I've got the antenna. And uh, yeah, it's all, all autopilot. So the frequency, as you can see, it's auto shifting itself. Losing the path a little bit, but pretty happy with that, to be honest. So that's a complete set. One-handed. is a little bit heavy, I won't lie. But it worked. I'm not sure how long it took me to actually get on the air. Obviously, this one takes a little bit more cutting around. But um, it works really well, so... Not that we picked anything up on that particular path. But you can see how, how that one works so that's that one on the tripod which now i've got the handle one i just need the one radio with the duplexer so this one's got two radios up and down link which i like because i can hear my own voice but as you can see i got straight in there on so 50 and that didn't take much doing at all
Well, that was absolutely awesome. I think you'll have to agree on that one. So the Arrow Mark II, uh, second one, just for going out with the duplex or with the one radio, nice and easy. If you're thinking about getting into it, obviously that's probably the way to go because if you get one of those uh, Retibis uh, RT6S GPS versions, you can put the Open GD77 package on, which has got the sat tracking with the automatic frequency correction. All you've got to do is update the caps and you do anything apart from talk, aim it in the right direction and you're on the air. Catch you later. And I just thought I'd have a bit of fun with that new antenna. It worked out quite well. See you soon.